today in 10 minutes and 26 slides, I figured I'd give you an overview of what's going on in the venture world, looking a little bit about overall funding trends, venture capital coming in, where it's being deployed, looking at who the active investors are out in the market, and then looking at M&A and uh, IPO activity in the venture sector for healthcare. So, um, so a little bit about me, I manage the uh, West Coast uh, healthcare relationships program for SVB. Uh, been around for a while. I know you guys, most of the folks here know SVB. If there's anything that we can do to help with your companies, just uh, give me a call. I've written a number of articles. If you go to svb.com, throw my name in there, all those articles come up. So let's talk about U.S. healthcare investments. Few, few, first few slides uh, specifically on the U.S. And the dark bars are really dollars invested into companies on a yearly basis. Although you can see I've estimated, or, or at least we have Q3 numbers of 2015. And you can see even through quarter three of this year, we are almost at 2014 numbers. And so 2015 is really set up to be the biggest dollar invested into health or healthcare and technology companies in venture capital since 2000. And you can see on the, on the bottom the percentage for biopharma sort of staying firm at 12%, even with bigger dollar amounts, device falling down a little bit. So people are saying, you know, is device investing going down? And the, the, really the answer is no, it's just dollars invested into the sectors. All other sectors are going up. So healthcare as a percentage is going down a little bit. And so if you really look at it on a yearly basis since 2009, you know, somewhere around $2.6 billion is invested into the sector, into companies on a yearly basis. And through Q3, it's sort of looking like it's right online. So this slide, dark blue line is dollars invested into companies. The light blue line is healthcare fundraising. And Emmett had this slide on his chart as well. And really the key takeaway is dollars invested in the companies are going up, but also healthcare fundraising is going up, which is really critical when you think about, one, the ability to start new companies, and then two, the ability to continue to fund these companies later in its life cycle. And you know, those two lines will never cross. And the reason why is because there's other sources of capital that's out there, and some of that capital we'll talk about today, but specifically the crossover investors, corporate ventures, those are some of the folks that aren't necessarily in the light blue line data that we see. So who are the most active investors? So over the last couple of years, 2013-14, here are our top 10 investors in terms of investing into new deals um, over the last two years. What's interesting on the biotech sector is one, you have three corporates that are outlined in red there. And two, when you actually go down the line, Orbamed, Atlas, uh, Novo is an evergreen fund, but NEA, Sofanova, Versant, Polaris, they've all raised funds very recently. And so there's been a very active deploying of capital. And actually there's two firms that raised just this year that raised their fund less than two years from their last fundraise. So a very active, aggressive deployment of capital. On the device side, you see a couple new names in there that haven't been in the past. Biostar has been very active out there. Uh, Longitude has done some device deals and a couple of corporates right at the bottom. And it's just sort of interesting to see who these active investors are. And if you look at what's happened so far this year, what I find fascinating is you're starting to see some Chinese investors getting more active in the sector. In biotech, the top investor, Morningside Group, in device, Ally Bridge, doing a lot of deals out in the, out in the, in the market. And again, this is just through the first half of the year and those numbers are going to go up. So what did we see in biotech in Q3 of this year? Well, you saw a lot of really big deals. There were four deals that had at least $100 million rounds. No deal had, more than, had less than $75 million in with a lot of crossover participation. And these deals are actually getting earlier and earlier stage. The crossovers are doing Series A and B deals now. And if we look at pre-money valuation, $6 million for a Series A biotech, when you get to Series C, it really ratchets up. And again, you know, going through these slides quickly, but there's some really interesting valuation inflections happening in biotech. And really, it's because of the crossovers. We're seeing a ton of crossover activities. And if you just look in from Q3, the start of Q3 of 2015 through early November, you have four companies, Fidelity, RA Capital, Rock Springs, and Cormorant doing at least nine deals during that time. So a lot of activity. And what does that really mean? 
Well, when we looked at step-ups in Series B rounds, if there's no crossover in a biotech Series B, 25% step-up. If there's a crossover, 78%. Um, so a lot of activity there. Um, and what's happened in the IPO market, if you have a crossover as part of your IPO uh, syndicate prior to going IPO, you're raising 60% uh, more dollars at an 88% higher valuation, and your, and your stock performance has been really good. So on the device side, we're seeing a lot of activity there as well. A bunch of bigger deals, a lot of crossover participation, but different folks than have been uh, doing a lot of the biotech side. And we're seeing some really interesting corporate folks step up as well. And interesting to see Endeavor Vision did three deals in Q3, um, and that's a $100 million medtech fund. So there are, there are new funds out there too that are looking to do deals. And we do think there's going to be a lot of China money coming into deals in Q4 and in 2016. That's going to be a big source of capital for the device uh, venture market. So pre-money valuations, similar to what we're seeing in biotech, except Series C is half as much, uh, but sort of gives you a perspective of what's going on in the market. So with that, let's transition to M&A. What I look at as on the, the straight uh, solid line is venture-backed M&A. Um, for biotech is 75 million up front. For device and tools and diagnostics, at least 50 million. Those are sort of the, my data um, parameters. And then the dotted line are IPOs that raise at least $25 million. You can see in 2014, a huge amount of IPOs, not quite as much so far in 2015. But what's interesting is on the M&A side, the dark, the solid line, um, we're almost at the M&A activity in Q3 of this year as we had in all of 2014. And you can see that was you know, the highest number since 2005. So a lot of M&A activity, and let's get into that a little bit. And if you look at where the actual returns are going, um, looking at pre-money IPO valuations as well as M&A upfront and giving you know, a little bit of credence for any milestones to be earned, We've seen 2015 through Q3 has already exceeded 2013 in potential distributions back to investors. So again, set up to be a really good year, and we've already seen some nice exits uh, in Q4 that should take that number actually really close to 2014. And I would not have said this last year. I would not have said 2015 would even be close to what we're seeing in 2014, but it looks like we are. Um, on the biopharma side, on a quarterly basis, you saw 24 IPOs in Q1 of 2014 for venture-backed biotech companies. You know, obviously that was a huge quarter. After that, you know, you're in the teens, and you look at 2015 on the IPO side, you're still seeing a significant number of IPOs. And in fact, there's already seven IPOs in Q4. And so I think we're on track. I think we're going to get you know 12 to 15 IPOs potentially this. Uh, this quarter. And so that's going to be a solid number, way better than 2013, but not quite as much as 2014. But this IPO optionality really has driven M&A. And you can see those M&A numbers in 2015 were already higher than we've seen uh, for the whole year in 2014. And you've already seen another couple deals that have happened in Q4 as well. And so on the IPO market specifically, you can see in 2013 to 14, there was a 2x increase in, uh, in IPO activity. Uh, but a 3x increase in early stage. And we started to see that 40% of the IPOs in 2014 were early stage, another 40% happening this year as well. So early stage IPOs continue to happen. Valuations and dollars raised are pretty stable. You see a lot of bigger, bigger IPOs this year as well. On the M&A side, you know, staying pretty static. Um, I think overall dollars is going up a little bit, and that's really because there's a lot of early stage activity. 2014 and 15, you're seeing a ton of M&A activity in early stage. On the device side, the zero in Q1 was a little bit problematic. We were wondering about the, the Medtronic Covidian merger and what was going to happen, but in Q3, we really saw a ton of activity on the M&A side, five of which were non-approved deals. And if you look at the trend over time, the light blue line, which is not approved, is much bigger than we've seen any other year. And in fact, when we look at where that is, you know, really cardiovascular and neuro are the ones that are doing a lot of work, although you see a, a decent amount of deal volume in ophthalmology as well. So looking since maybe a little bit longer term from 2009, you know, ophthalmology, six deals during that period of time, that's at least $50 million or more, less than seven years, time to exit which again, nice to see. So in summary, I think we're pretty excited about where things are in 2015. 
and I think I may just get cut off here, but um, we're excited. I think biotech looks good. Device is being fairly stable, and M&A has really, has really been upsized. So, you know, we're excited about the year, and we really want to thank you for the time. Thanks so much.